Hello, and thanks for tuning in to another Dell Networking Podcast. My name is Dustin Cardoza, Network Enterprise Technologist here at Dell. Today, we're going to be going in and doing pre-boot NIC partitioning setup with the Dell PowerEdge M620 Blade Server, as well as the Broadcom 57810 and the QLogic QME8262 Converge Network Adapters. Now the setup today is going to be done completely independent of operating system. We're going to access the system setup for the blade server and we're going to do all that straight from the chassis management controller page. So once again, thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoy. We're going to start today by first logging in to our chassis management controller, which I'm going to do right now. And once we've got into the actual chassis management controller page, we're going to start here at the chassis overview. Now the server we're going to work on today is the one in slot two. So I'm going to select the server in slot two and then come over here to the right and select the launch remote console link. Now you notice that's bringing up a new tab in my browser and how this behaves with your browser depends on what browser you use. I'm using Firefox today. So we're going to go ahead and let that all load up. In just a second, Remote Console is going to launch. So I'm going to pull that up and you can see here, I now have a Remote Console straight into the server itself. Now the server's powered up right now, but as you can see, I have no operating system installed on this uh, server uh, right now. Now I need to access the system setup. So I'm going to need to power cycle this. So I'm going to go to the power section and then say power cycle system and just confirm. Now this is going to take a couple minutes to power cycle. So I'm not going to make you sit through all that. We'll come back in just a second. Okay, you can see the system is booting up here. I'm going to hit F2 and now I'm entering the system setup. So we'll go ahead and let that finish and then we'll come back and uh, start again. Okay, we're now in our device settings and our system setup page, and I'm gonna click on the device settings button, and that's gonna take me over into the page where I can actually see the adapters that I have installed on this particular server. So that's gonna take just a second. And here we are at the device settings page and we can see all of the different adapters we have installed. Now, if we start with the very first adapter, this is the network daughter card, which is listed as the integrated NIC. And this is port one of the dual port card. And that of course is our Broadcom uh, 57810 card. Now, if we go down to the next one, this is the integrated uh, adapter and this is port two of that same dual port card. And then the next ones we're going to look at and configure will be the QLogic 8262, and that's installed in the C mezzanine slot of the M620 blade. And of course, the next one down is the second port of that same QLogic adapter. The two down are the at the bottom are the Intel X520 adapters. I have those installed in the B mezzanine slot of this server but the Intel does not support NIC partitioning, so we're not gonna be doing any configuration on that today. We're gonna to go ahead and start up at the very top with the first port of the Broadcom adapter. So clicking on that, I can come in here and there is a NIC partitioning configuration menu. Now that menu doesn't appear until you actually check the NPAR button. If you uh, put the adapt or the adapter into a forced switch function mode, you'll notice the NIC partitioning menu completely disappears. But if we click on the NPAR button, we can then go into the NIC partitioning configuration menu. Now inside the NIC partitioning configuration menu, we have all of our four partitions that we can go in and configure, as well as the global bandwidth allocation menu. We'll get to that in just a second. Starting with partition one, you notice by default, Ethernet and iSCSI offload have both been enabled. Now, one of the big differences on the Broadcom versus the QLogic adapter is that Broadcom will allow us to run both an Ethernet and iSCSI offload simultaneously on the same partition. So I'm gonna leave both of those checked for now. 
because uh, I want one iSCSI partition and I'm going to use partition one for that iSCSI. Going into partition two, the default behavior in partition two is that Ethernet is enabled and both of the other protocols are disabled. And that's exactly what I want here. We'll go in and look at partition three, which is also Ethernet enabled. iSCSI and FCOE have both been disabled. Again, that's exactly what I want today. And then partition four is exactly the same. Ethernet enabled and the other two protocols disabled. So what I'm gonna end up with today is one uh, iSCSI adapter, as well as three ethernet only adapters. Now, going into the global bandwidth allocation. If you come into the global bandwidth allocation page, starting with partition one, you're gonna see a relative bandwidth and then a maximum bandwidth. Now the relative bandwidth weight is the guaranteed bandwidth for that partition. This is the guaranteed minimum amount of bandwidth. So if you add up all of the minimum guaranteed bandwidths for all four partitions, it can't equal more than 100%. Because we're using partition one, in this case for iSCSI, I'm gonna give it 50% of my pipe. So I'm gonna say five zero on that one. Coming down to our first ethernet only partition, which is partition number two, I'm gonna go ahead and set this one to 30%. Now I'm doing that because in this particular scenario, I'm planning to use partition number two as a vMotion uh, interface. And then number three is going to be for VM data traffic. And I'm gonna just set that to 10. And I have 10% remaining, which I'm gonna go ahead and dedicate to the management partition which I'm gonna use partition four for management. So now I have 50, 30, 10, and 10, which all adds up to 100. I'm gonna leave the maximum bandwidths in place. Uh, and the reason I'm going to leave those all at 100 is that if any one of my partitions is not using all of their guaranteed bandwidth, they may dynamically share their bandwidth with other partitions. So the relative bandwidth is the minimum guaranteed, but they can all scale all the way up to 100 if need be. So I'm gonna say back, and I've already done all the partitioning and bandwidth allocations, so I'm going to say back again, and I'm finished with the first port on the Broadcom adapter. So I'm gonna say okay to those changes, and now let's go into the second port of that same adapter. Going into the NIC partitioning menu, I wanna make sure that the, my settings are correct. Partition one, ethernet, and iSCSI. The remaining three should all be ethernet only. So partition two, we're good. Partition three, also good. Partition four, also good. And let's go ahead and set the bandwidth. Now I'm gonna set the bandwidth exactly the same as I did on the first port because I'm trying to build a fully redundant setup here. So I did 50, 30, 10, and 10. I'm gonna say back. And we're gonna finish the configuration. We wanna confirm. And now we're back to our device settings page and we have finished the configuration of NPAR for the first ports, which are the Broadcom 57810. That's ports one and two of the Broadcom adapter. Now those settings aren't gonna take effect until we're completely done and power cycle the server. But before we do that, we're gonna now go into the QLogic adapters and take a look at how we configure NPAR on QLogic, which is a little bit different than on the Broadcom. So let's go ahead and start with the first port on the QLogic card. Now you notice in here, there's not a checkbox to turn off and on NPAR uh, like there was in the Broadcom. So here we start at the NIC partitioning configuration page and it looks kind of similar to Broadcom. We have our bandwidth allocation and then we have the partitions one through four. Now by default, uh, the QLogic adapter has partition one enabled and only in NIC or ethernet mode. You notice we can't change anything on partition one. 
Uh, QLogic is a bit more prescriptive about what partitions can be used for what function. So by default, the first partition can only be Ethernet mode and you cannot disable it. So going back, we're going to go into partition number two. Now in partition number two, you notice that it can also only run in NIC or Ethernet mode. But the big difference between this and partition one is that we can either enable or disable the partition. So we want to go ahead and enable the partition. So we have another Ethernet adapter show up. We're going to go back and then take a look at partition number three. Now partition three is the only partition that you can run iSCSI offload uh, on the QLogic adapter. This is where QLogic and Broadcom differ in uh, how they handle the iSCSI offload. On Broadcom, you could do it on any one of the four partitions, but on QLogic, it's only available on partition number three. So in this case, we're going to run iSCSI offload mode. Now I want you to also notice that you can't run both protocols at the same time. So if I enable iSCSI, the NIC or Ethernet mode becomes disabled. So that's another key difference between QLogic and Broadcom. I can only run one function per partition. Now going into partition number four, much like partition three, except not for iSCSI, but this time for FCOE, partition four is the only partition in which I can run FCOE on the QLogic adapter. And likewise, I can't run NIC mode and FCOE at the same time. So if I enable FCOE, NIC mode becomes disabled. But I want to run this as an Ethernet adapter, so I'm going to disable FCOE, enable NIC mode, and now I can go back. Now that I've done picking out what functions I want each partition to have, I'm going to go into my global bandwidth allocation. Now you'll notice in here the global bandwidth allocation page looks a little bit different than it did on the Broadcom adapter, um, but it does the same exact uh, function. So starting with the relative bandwidth weights, which are the minimum guaranteed, I'm going to go ahead and set those. Now our, our partitions are in a little bit different order here because of the way that QLogic forces you to use a, a specific partition for a specific function. So this time, we're going to do vMotion on our very first partition. So I'm going to set that one to 30%. The second one was an Ethernet partition, and it's going to be for VM data. So I'm going to set that one to 10. My third one was my iSCSI partition. So I'm going to set that one to 50% of the pipe. And the fourth one was for my management. And I'm going to set that one to 10. I'm going to leave all of the maximums at 100, just like we did on the Broadcom. Now going back, we have finished with the first port of the QLogic adapter. And now we can go in and start working on the second port. So let's say OK to that one and go do port 2. And we'll run through that one really fast. So one, of course, you can't change. We're going to enable Ethernet on partition 2. We're going to go into partition 3 and enable iSCSI. Okay. And then we're going to go into partition 4 and enable Ethernet. Go back. And now we'll go into our global bandwidth allocation and set that as well. And on for QLogic, we went 30, 10, 50, and 10. Let's click back, back, and we'll do finish. Say yes, and wait for the other confirmation to pop up here, which takes just a few seconds. We say OK, and now we're done. So with that, we have finished the NPAR setup, and we can go back to the system setup, click finish, and now we're ready to exit and reboot. So this system is going to reboot, and the end result is of, of what we've just done is that 
there are going to be 16 different adapters that show up on the operating system of this server. There's going to be eight partitions that showed up on the Broadcom adapter and another eight that show up on the QLogic adapter. And so that's how you go in and configure NPAR in a pre-boot state completely independent of what operating system goes on to the server. Thanks so much for tuning in and have a wonderful day.